HTMX is a lean, powerful extension to HTML designed to turbocharge your web pages with AJAX, WebSockets, and more without the bulk of JavaScript frameworks. It works on the concept of HTML as the engine of application state, or HATIOS, and provides an elegant, server-first way to write web applications by updating the DOM with HTML returned from the server. Today, we cut through the fluff and get straight to the heart of HTMX. For developers who speak HTML on demand efficiency, get ready to supercharge your web pages. Let's dive in and unlock the full potential of HTMX, one attribute at a time. Installing HTMX is as simple as adding a single script tag to the head of your web page. You can also self-serve the minified library or install it via NPM. HTMX is used in HTML code, usually within templates. Code in this video will be HTML snippets with HTMX for use in a larger application. Backend code will be left up to the imagination. We'll discuss options for writing HTMX application backends towards the end of this video. HTMX operates using HTML attributes that can be added to DOM elements. These are prefixed with HX, though data HX will also work if you prefer that. Get started by adding HX get, put, post, patch, or delete to a button with a URL as the value to issue a HTTP request to that URL on click. HTMX will insert any HTML returned from the server into the inner HTML of the element that fired the event, in this case, the button. If the server returns HTML with HTMX attributes, these can be used to trigger further events. By default, requests are triggered by the natural event of an element. This is change for input, select, and text area elements, submit for forms, and click for just about everything else. You can use a custom trigger with the HX trigger attribute. This will accept any HTML5 event or one of three special events. Use load to fire when an element is first loaded, reveal to fire when an element first scrolls into view, and use intersect to fire when an element first intersects a specific location on the viewport. Triggers can accept further options, separated by a space, such as once and change, which will force the event to only fire once, or if the element has changed, respectively. Other options take a value separated by a colon. These are delay, throttle, and from. Delay will delay the request for the time specified, restarting if the event happens again. Throttle is similar, but instead of restarting the timer, it will cancel any further events that happen during the cooldown. From takes a CSS selector to listen for the event on another element. The intersect trigger also takes root and threshold selectors to specify the root element of the intersection and a number between 0 and 1 for the amount of intersection to fire on. Finally, the every trigger will fire a request at the given cadence, allowing easy polling to update news feeds, etc. Apply a filter to a trigger using square brackets after the event. These contain a JavaScript expression which will be evaluated, only firing the event if the expression returns true. Properties like control key will be resolved against the triggering event first before the global scope. This means you could trigger a button event only if the control key is being held down, for example. Add the HTMX indicator class to an element to have it show only when there's an in-flight request triggered by a parent element. This is useful for loading spinners. Alternatively, use the HX indicator attribute to target a non-child element to use as the indicator for a request. If you want the HTML returned by the server to be loaded into an element other than the caller, use the HX target attribute with a CSS selector. Use this to target the current element, which is the default behavior. You can also use modifiers such as closest, next, and previous to target the closest closest, next, and previous elements in the DOM that match the given selector. The find modifier will target the first child descendant of the current element. By default, HTMX will replace the inner HTML of the target element with the response from the server. You can change this behavior with the HX swap attribute. Use outer HTML to replace the whole target element. After begin, we'll insert the response before the first child element of the target, and before end, we'll insert it as the last element. Before begin and after end, we'll place the response just before and after the target element, respectively. Use delete to delete the target regardless of the response, or use none to disable swapping. HX swap takes a number of options. Use transition true to use the new view transitions API for the swap. Swap will allow you to add a delay between when old content is removed and new content is inserted, and settled adds a delay between the insertion and the settling of the new content. See the docs for more information for the swap and settle strategy that HTMX uses. Ignore title true will prevent any title elements passed in the response from affecting the page title. Otherwise, the page title will be replaced. Use scroll top or scroll bottom to scroll the target element to the top or bottom of the screen, or use show to show the top or bottom of the new element after the swap. Use a morph swap to merge the new DOM elements instead of replacing them, allowing the preservation of focus, video state, etc, etc, by editing the nodes in place. If your server is becoming overloaded with requests, or you're seeing race conditions, use HX sync to coordinate events between two elements. Use a selector similar to HX target to select the synced element, followed by a colon and one of drop, abort, replace, or queue. 
to define how requests will behave. Drop will cancel requests from the element if the target element already has a request in flight. Abort will do the same, but it will also abort any in-flight requests if the target element starts a new request. Replace will abort any current request from the target element and replace it with this one. And queue will place the request in a queue associated with the target element. You can use queue first, last, or all to determine which requests are added to the queue while the existing one is in flight. To determine the swap target from the server, use hx swap oob equals true to enable out of band swaps. This will swap the new element with an element anywhere on the page with the same ID attribute. This is useful for piggybacking updates on other requests. You may, for example, use this to increase a notification counter in the corner of a page. You can select certain content to swap from the response using hx select with a list of CSS selectors or use hx select oob to select elements for an out of band swap using their IDs. For content you wish to preserve during a swap, use hx preserve to keep an element unchanged during the replacement of a parent element. Preserved elements should have an ID that remains unchanged before and after the new content is swapped in. Again, this is useful to keep video elements playing, preserve focus, and so on. To send data to the server, use a non-get request within a form to automatically send any values in the current form. Values are named using the name attribute of the input they're tied to. Use hx include with a CSS selector to include values of arbitrary elements with the request, or hx params to filter in or out specific parameters. Alternatively, use hx vals or hx vars to send extra parameters with JSON or a colon separated key value format, respectively. Both of these can use JavaScript expressions for which the value will be calculated before sending. To send files, set the hx encoding attribute to multi-part form data, then handle the resulting form data object on the server, however your language chooses to do so. Use hx confirm with a message to confirm any triggered event with a dialog before sending. You can intercept the htmx colon confirm event to trigger your own custom dialog. Most htmx attributes are inherited, meaning these two snippets are the same. Unset an inherited value using unset or by overriding the attribute. Alternatively, use hx disinherit to disable inheritance for an element and its children. Use hx boost to convert anchor tags and forms into ajax requests that, by default, target the page body. These will degrade gracefully if JavaScript is not enabled, reverting back to anchor tags and forms so they continue to work, allowing progressive enhancement. HTMX also has experimental support for WebSockets and server sent events through the hxws and hx SSE attributes. See examples of these in use in the docs. HTMX also provides support for other browser features such as the history API, CSS transitions and animations, and form validation. There are also a number of headers included in requests and responses that HTMX will send and listen for to change its behavior. These are all in the docs too, as well as information on extending HTMX using scripting libraries such as HyperScript and how to debug HTMX applications. HTMX applications are predominantly backend driven and HTMX is completely backend agnostic. However, this doesn't mean that all backends are equally suited to creating HTMX applications. You'll typically want to use a HTTP API framework and a templating language to generate the HTML responses. For TypeScript or JavaScript, common choices include Express or Koa with templating engines such as EJS or Handlebars. If you're using Python, you might choose to use Django or FastAPI with Ginger templating. Go users will typically use the standard libraries NetHttp and TemplateHTML, or may reach for HTTP frameworks such as Jin or Echo with Temple as a templating engine. If you're a Rust user, Leptos is a good choice. There will be solutions for most languages, but the best solutions will allow you to create reusable components for your templates to keep your code dry and your applications maintainable. And if you want to try your hand at creating a HTMX application, but don't know what language to choose, why not learn Go? You can learn everything you need in under nine minutes using this video here. And leave a comment to let me know which impatient devs video you would like to see next.